What's up, everybody? I figured I would do this video to update you guys on what's going on. I was just in the US for three weeks and I just got back to Nicaragua. So now the whole world is freaking out about this coronavirus stuff. And I gotta say, going to the airport, I, it did not seem like it was a big of a deal. Uh, I saw people in masks, but aside from that, neither in the US nor in Nicaragua, was I really like asked anything about being sick or even asked like where I had been traveling or any of this. None of it was even a problem, which is kind of unsettling, right? Because I don't know about you guys, but I, this is something like this has never happened in my life. There's places in the US now that have closed down school for three weeks. Whole areas are doing this, right? There's no more big events. Uh, music festivals, these things are postponed or canceled. Big amusement parks are shutting down. It's crazy. This is a completely different time where things are going on. Don't know what to think about it, really. There's definitely some way to make YouTube content about it. Not saying about coronavirus, but the world's in a very different state right now. And like, what's a bit concerning is that like these travel bans and things, they're saying, oh, for a month. But do you, do you really think everything's gonna be better in just a month? Do you think cases will stop spreading? These things will stop happening? These kinds of shutdowns are probably going to last a while. It's definitely an interesting time. Scary, but there's not really a whole lot you can do. It's crazy. I spent like two hours researching, or no, two days researching uh, influenza outbreaks because I wanted to understand more about the conditions, like what influenza does, why it kills people sometimes, why we get scared every time there's swine flu or something. And I strongly encourage you to research the Spanish influenza, uh, which is a bad name actually. I don't know if you know anything about it historically, but in 19... 18 to 1920, more people died to an outbreak of influenza than in the whole World War. You're talking about 20, 30, 40 million people died to this influenza. And a lot of them were like my age or people in our generation. They were between like 20 and 30. Um, that specific sickness made people's immune systems attack themselves or attack their lungs. And then they would get pneumonia and perish or not perish. But what's interesting about it is the, the context of this time. I really encourage you guys, there's this channel called Extra Credits, and they have a six, 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 uh, one? six part series about the Spanish influenza and all of the conditions that led to that happening. Um, basically, the way the world works now, it's even with something like this happening and the disease spreading, it's impossible for the same thing to happen again because we were in a world war carting around 10 or millions of people in close confined environments, not containing people, not quarantining people. We literally made the perfect environment for a disease to spread. So it's interesting to look, look, look up and that probably isn't very comforting, but at least you should understand that it isn't actually possible for things to get that bad anymore. Basically, a disease that kills most of the people that it infects dies out very quickly. Like, we often have this fear that there's these diseases that maybe will, like, wipe out all the people on Earth, but that's actually not realistic. There's only, there's certain environmental conditions that would need to be met for that even to be possible, right? And one of the unique things about the World War was that we were enabling these environmental conditions. Because normally, a virus that kills will not spread very, very far, especially if it kills quickly, because the disease is killing the people before they can infect other people, right? So the, one of the reasons, the main reason that this 1918-1919 plague, or not plague, sorry, virus was so lethal was because we were sending soldiers 
into trenches and then they were leaving and new soldiers were going in. They were leaving, new soldiers were going in. So we were just refilling the environment over and over and over and over again with people from all over the world. It's literally, if you could think of the worst possible thing to do during an outbreak, historically, we already did that a hundred years ago. And so it's really interesting to study this period of time because as, as a young person like me, I didn't know that in 1918, 1990, the uh, outbreak of influenza killed more people than the First World War. Like, that's crazy, especially one reason people were so scared of this is because most of the people, or a lot of the people who died in this time were 20 to 30. They were like my age, our age, right? Um, and that's one of the reasons that it, people get so scared like of flying swine flu and avian flu and coronavirus. Um, it's not because of what the disease currently is. It's because of the potential for the disease to mutate. So in this 1918, uh, and I, I keep saying Spanish influenza, but it's actually misleading to say Spanish influenza because basically what was happening is all of the countries were sick, but they were at war and they were limiting the press. They weren't allowing the press to talk about the disease because they didn't want the enemy to know that the armies were sick. But Spain was neutral. So Spain was publishing information about the disease in their newspapers because they weren't limiting their information, right? Freedom of speech was very much not a thing at this point in time. And what this meant is that the rest of the world was like, oh, Spain's the one that started it, when really Spain was one of the last places or later places to get infected and it started elsewhere and all these other countries were lying about it. So you can call it Spanish influenza to refer to the influenza outbreak in 1918, 1919, and 1920. However, understand that saying it's the Spanish influenza is literally saying that all these other countries had it first and they lied and they blamed Spain. Okay, so you should understand historically, it's not very tasteful to call it Spanish influenza, but that is what it's referred to as, right? So another interesting thing about this is that uh, it's not like it's just a, uh, a virus that spreads and then kills a bunch of people. Um, it actually wasn't killing that many people until the virus mutated. So there were three major main waves of the influenza in 1918, 1919, 1920. And the first wave wasn't very lethal. But then the second wave mutated and became much, much more lethal than the first wave. And then the third wave was more lethal than the first one, but not as deadly as the second one. And this is really interesting because essentially there were multiple versions of the disease, of the sickness. So if you had the first one and you survived, if you got the influenza of this time, of this era that was spreading, and you survived it, that meant that if you were around people who got the second more deadly one, because you already had the first one, you were actually immune to the more deadly version of the disease. And you shouldn't think that just because you've gotten it in the past, like just because you've had the flu in the past doesn't mean you're immune to this flu, okay? But if you, it is possible that if you get this coronavirus and you survive, you are then in the safest position you can be in compared to other people. Because the big fear people have isn't that this disease or this virus is just going to spread everywhere. It's that it's going to spread everywhere and then it's going to mutate and there will be a new form of it that is more lethal. That's the fear, right? So you, the safest people are actually the people who get the disease but don't die before the virus mutates to a more dangerous version. And I'm not saying that if you get coronavirus and then it mutates, that you're going to be immune? Because there is a chance when a mutation happens that it mutates so much that the same antibodies aren't applicable. 
so you're not protected. But in general, most of the time, if you develop antibodies for a specific virus, and that virus mutates without, in, in a relatively normal way, then you are usually going to be immune to the new mutated version of the virus. Not always, but you're more likely to. So that's kind of interesting. Don't, you shouldn't think that this is just some plague that's spreading everywhere and is gonna kill everyone. It's not that simple. And also, there, it is impossible for it to be as bad as it was 100 years ago. Um, so 100 years ago, it was actually an H1N1 virus. So it wasn't a coronavirus, it was a version of avian flu. Um, and it's quite interesting because this period of time is studied so much, as I've mentioned, because of the age of the people it killed. The people with the healthiest immune systems were the ones that were often dying. And also understand that back in this time, we couldn't even see viruses yet. We literally didn't have the technology to see them. Our microscopes couldn't see that small. A virus is smaller than a cell. And we could barely see cells, right? So this represents, or the, the 1918 to 1920 influenza outbreak represents what happens in the worst case scenario when the vast majority of people are uneducated about it, doctors are uneducated, and there's environmental or economic conditions leading to loads and loads of people being crammed together constantly and shipped all over the world. Like now with these travel bans and these things, they're actually trying to prevent that from happening or at least slow the progress down, right? But that's also another kind of interesting thing is that this is just really buying us time because the outbreak, the, the reality of all of these influenza outbreaks is that they eventually burn out because they've infected most of the people in the world and most of the people in the world have developed some kind of community resistance to the disease. Um, there's ways that if multiple members in your community become resistant to a disease, you can also start to become resistant to that. That's something called community resistance. Um, there's a lot of really interesting stuff to, to study here. And there's definitely a lot of opportunities coming up, particularly on YouTube, just because of how many, how, the kinds of things that people are searching for right now are completely changing. Because uh, obviously people are searching a lot more about viruses. Anything about plagues or viruses or influenza, any kind of content about this is suddenly experiencing huge spikes of interest. And e-commerce sales are down, stock markets are down, everything's being affected. And that's what's so fascinating about this whole event. Like, don't get me wrong, it's, it's scary. But at the same time, it's one of the most unique things that anyone in our generation has been through. And maybe this will bring people together because these kind of viruses, they don't care if you're Republican or if you're Democrat. They don't care if you're Islamic or if you're Christian. They don't care if you live in the United States or you live in China. So right now, the whole world, every person on this planet is having a fear that we all share. And I'm curious, what's that gonna cause in the future? Do you think that it's possible that this will be something that brings people together in the future because everyone will be able to talk about what they were doing when everything shut down due to coronavirus? What do you guys think is gonna happen? Let me know in the comments and as a reward for any of you who are still watching this 14 minute rant, I'm doing a weekly or a one week live stream. I will do the live streams between nine and 10 p.m. my time. This is around, it's two hour difference. So this is around, this is uh, like in the afternoon, early afternoon for Eastern Standard Time. And these live streams will be once per day for five days straight. So if you miss one, don't worry. And in these live streams, I will literally just be working until people join, and then I will help you with whatever you want for free. If you wanna learn about drop shipping, I'll help you. If you wanna learn about studying on Udemy or creating courses, I will help you. You just have to join the call, ask questions. 
I will answer them. You don't have to show your face. You could just ask questions in the chat. I'm there for you guys. And I will be here one hour, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, starting next week. So today, I have to look at the... So I will be doing a one hour live stream every day from the 16th through the 20th. The live stream will occur between 9 p.m. and 10 p.m. my time. This is 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to 12, or sorry, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time to 12 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. I know this is kind of early for some of you guys, but hopefully you can make it to at least one of them, and I will help with anything. These are literally Q&A, ask me anything. I will help in any way that I can. So if you have some kind of emotional concern or you want to learn about ways to earn money online or you want to learn about selling courses, running a YouTube channel, drop shipping, e-commerce, consulting, any of this stuff, just join the live stream, just subscribe to this channel, check out this week of live streams that I'm doing starting on the 16th to the 20th. I will be doing an hour long live stream every single day for five days in a row. All right, I'm excited to see you guys. See you then, best of luck. And don't worry too much. We're all going to die someday. So if this virus stuff is scaring you, make sure you spend time with people you love and think about it. Because if you feel scared to die now, maybe that will give you some insight into what you're doing in your life that you don't like and what you wish you would have done better. So when all this boils over and is done, which it inevitably will be in one or two years, even in the worst case scenario, Virus outbreaks don't last longer than that, right? So, even in the worst case scenario, it will get better. It will get to a point where it's okay, this is in the past, and it's something that all of us remember, right? Even in that scenario, you got to think, what could you have done better? If you're scared right now, what are you scared of losing? Who are you scared of losing? What do you wish you would have done better? Use this to figure out what you can improve about your life. Because the concept of death shouldn't scare you. You should live every single day knowing you're going to die and that you are living the best life that you possibly can. And that's all you can do. All right, guys, best of luck. See you next time.